Man, drones, guys. Canadian drones, in fact. Today we're talking drones in Canada because, well, we now require a license to fly one of these things. And it just happened a few days ago, June 1st, 2019. And if you don't know about this and you're still flying your drone, there's some pretty hefty fines that you're going to be faced with. So you got to get it together. We're going to talk about all the changes, all the rules, everything you need to know and kind of break everything down and find out if maybe this is something that you still want to think about investing in or not. Who knows? And if you do, if you're going to go for your license, I'm going to show you how and give you some tips and tricks so you can get going on it quick. Let's go. So drones can definitely give you some really cool and dramatic shots and it's great if you're a YouTuber or a hobbyist or somebody who just wants to get a drone and fly it around for fun. But unfortunately, basically every drone you're going to fly that's, well, over 250 grams, you're going to need a license for. And to put that into perspective, this little Mavic Pro is about 750 grams. So pretty much any drone that's worth flying, you're going to need a license for. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive in today and just check out some of the changes, some of the rules, some of the fines, and uh, talk a bit about the test and see if this is something that uh, is worth doing for you. Here we go. So right before we start, there are a few things to know about this video moving forward. I am going to give you some tips and tricks. You might want to take some notes if you are thinking about taking your license. And for this particular video, we're going to focus on the basic license and we're going to get into why later but it is definitely more intensive if you plan to do your advanced license i would suggest maybe taking notes i will kind of highlight a few things to know that might be important to know maybe on your test and i can't say for sure exactly what's on the test nor will i give you the exact answer but i will kind of give you hints and of course guys if you do find this video helpful make sure you hit that like and subscribe button too so jumping right in, everything that you're going to need to find, basically everything drone related you're going to be able to find on the Government of Canada website and specifically the Transport Canada website or page. And this is kind of what it looks like right here. So a few things to know right off the bat, you're going to look for your legal requirements when flying a drone and like I said, anything over 250 grams you're going to need a license for, which is pretty much everything. So make sure you know the basically the bylaws of your cities, make sure you know the general laws, the privacy laws, anything that you think is important before you get out there. We're not going to cover all that of course, but make sure you respect the laws of your country. And if you're flying to any other country or you're going to a different place, make sure you check out their laws as well. You don't want to get yourself into problems. So let's first look at the penalties. If you screw up, this is what happens if you do bad things with drones. Firstly, fines for individuals. $1,000 for flying a drone without a license. $1,000 for flying an unregistered or unmarked drone. And yes, both of those things cost money. Your pilot license at this point is $10 and to register a drone is $5. Of course it is. It's up to $1,000 for flying where you're not allowed and up to $3,000 for putting aircraft and people at risk. If you're a corporation and break these rules, you're paying up big time. Basically, they're not screwing around. Keep this in mind. Another thing to note is that insurance at this point is recommended but not required. So let's look at a few things to note while flying your drone. Firstly, make sure you have visual line of sight, meaning you can see your drone at all times. This is important. Two, make sure you know you can fly your drone a maximum of 400 feet in the air. And Definitely remember this. This is an easy number to remember, but I would also maybe check to see if you know the difference between sea level and ground level. That might be important. Fly away from bystanders and if you have your basic license at a minimum horizontal distance of 30 meters or 100 feet. Do not fly near or definitely not over pedestrians. Stay away from emergency operations and advertised events. 
avoid forest fires, outdoor concerts and parades, and stay away from airports and heliports. 5.6 kilometers from airports and 1.9 kilometers from heliports. Know these numbers. If you have your basic license, definitely fly only outside controlled airspace. If you want to fly inside controlled airspace, you need to have your advanced license. Don't fly anywhere near airplanes, helicopters, or other drones. And this is just common sense, but a human-occupied aircraft always has the right of way. Definitely a few useful terms that you should know are RPAS, which is basically a drone and means drone and remotely piloted aircraft system, visual line of sight or VLOS, and bystander. Know the difference definitely between bystander and a crew. And yes, there is a crew basically associated with drones now. There is a definition. They have jobs and it might be beneficial for you to learn those jobs for sure. So there are a few different options when it comes to licensing for a drone. Basically, we've been talking about your basic operations, which is the most simple. All you need to do is take the test online, grab it, and you're done. And we have covered just a few of the limitations. Basically, fly 100 feet away or 30 meters from bystanders, not over them, and only fly in uncontrolled airspace where there's no air traffic. The advanced operations license allows you to fly over and closer to people, as well as in controlled airspace with air traffic controls permission. Do note that this license actually requires you to go to a drone school and actually take a flight test. Above and beyond that, you'll need an SFOP or Special Flight Operations Certificate if you want to fly a drone over 25 kilograms at an advertised event, above 400 feet, and a few other restrictions which aren't covered here. So most of this actually might sound pretty straightforward. And for the most part, what I've told you is, but unfortunately, a lot of the tests that you will take is absolutely ridiculous and has absolutely nothing to do with drones whatsoever. We're talking environmental things, weather, aerodynamics, flight paths, and aviation jargon. Here's basically a list of the categories that are included in this test. So there are literally thousands of pages to scroll through resources from all sorts of things and there are links on Transport Canada's website that will take you to where you need to go but honestly, having said all this, I passed on my first time with 85% and I'm no rocket scientist. You have 90 minutes to take the test and I suggest you use every second. Google is your best friend. Take your time and basically when it comes down to it, most of it's just common sense. So like I said before, check the links in the description for everything you need, including where to take your actual exam online. It looks like this. And make sure you're at least 14 years old to take your basic license. Once you're on the website, you're going to need to log in or create an account. And for the vast majority of people, you're just going to need the basic exam. There's really no need to get the advanced license unless you're really doing it for work or want to do something really specific. Once again, the exam costs $10 to take, it has 35 multiple choice questions, and if you do fail, you can take it as many times as you want, although you do have to wait 24 hours. So is it all worth it? Does it actually make sense to go through all these hoops just to fly a drone probably once a year maybe? I don't know. Well, if you have a drone already, absolutely. Go ahead and just do your test, get it out of the way, and the off chance that you're out somewhere and you decide to take it for a little spin and you get busted. Absolutely worth the $10 to do it. And you know what, even if you do fail the first time, the second time is going to be a lot easier. And I've given you a whole bunch of tips and tricks. Hopefully you've been listening and following along and, and keeping an eye out for things that might be important. Yes, if you don't own a drone and you're considering going through the steps to get your license and a drone, is it worth it at this point? And that's something you're going to have to answer for yourself. I don't really know if I would go through all this stuff having known what I know now. So that's really just something, do your research and if you really want to fly a drone, then you're going to have to go through these steps. But it's not as daunting as it may seem, it's just one more thing to do. So one last time, definitely check out the links in the description to see where you need to go for the test, for the resources and whatnot. 
And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments as well. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. And yeah, definitely drop your questions in the comments down below. Like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time, guys.